Thank you, Petra. So hello, everybody. Um, my name is Panayota Faturu, and I'm going to talk to you, as Petra said, about uh, multiversion and can concurrent data structures. So what is a multiversion object? It is an object that maintains its previous versions, basically. So a thread can have access to the history of the object, so to its previous values. And we can see here the example. The initial value of the object is 5. Uh, so at, at the beginning, the current version of the object is 5, but then I write 10 occurs, and now the current version of the object is 10, but there is some way here by having this list to also access the previous version, which is 5. And then I write 8 occurs, and now the current version is 8, but again, we can figure out somehow that the previous version to 8 was 10, and the previous version to 10 was 5, okay? And uh, let me just mention that multiversion NIC is widely used, mainly in database systems. And you can see here a lot of well-known database systems that use multiversion NIC for concurrency control. But it has also been used in software transactional memory and in concurrent data structures. And our focus today will be in this three, third, third field, which is the concurrent data structures. And more specifically, I'm going to present a paper by Vey et al., which has been published in PIPOP 2021. So why multiversioning? Because many applications uh, in concurrent data structures, uh, because many applications require querying large portions or multiple parts of the data structures. For instance, big data applications use shared in-memory tree-based data indices for fast data retrieval and useful data analytics. And uh, this data analytics, um, what, uh, what they need to do is basically to traverse the tree or part of the tree in an atomic way, okay? And then uh, produce some output, output in order to solve, for instance, uh, the k-nearest neighbor uh, or similarity search queries, okay? So I'm going to present the Vikas technique, which, as I said, is published in this paper. And uh, what the Vikas technique does is it can apply it on a concurrent data structure, sorry, which is built out of CAS objects. and. Uh, uh, by applying this technique, and uh, of course the technique used multiversioning to do this, we can take a snapshot of the data structure, and then we can use this snapshot to answer multi-point queries. Okay? And uh, you may have, um, let me explain the uh, words that you may do not, keywords that you may do not understand here, you may do not know, you may not be familiar with. A snapshot basically saves a read-only version of the state of the data structure at a single point in time. So in, uh, in a sense, it is an atomic view of the state of the data structure. And a multipoint query is a read-only query but uh, which has to read multiple points, multiple nodes in the data structure in an atomic way, okay? Um, and in this paper, uh, this is how I define the snapshot, but uh, the snapshot that the Vikas technique provides is actually a handle to the snapshot. So it is a way, it gives you a handle, and then later on, whenever the, the thread is, 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 is ready, it can go through this, this, this it can use the handle to access the snapshot and answer the query. Okay, I'm gonna give more details. Uh, but before I give the details of the Vikas technique, let me give you some background knowledge. So I, I guess you know all this, but I'm, so I'm gonna be fast. The system is asynchronous. There are n threads, and this n can be arbitrarily large. And the threads communicate by accessing shared variables. And when I say by accessing, I mean that um, uh, these shared variables are, support atomic read, atomic write, but in addition, uh, sorry, but in addition, uh, compare and swap. And I guess you all know, but please feel free to stop me and ask questions if you do not understand something, okay? The compare and swap takes, uh, and all these are, are takes three, three arguments, a variable v, an old value, and a new value. And it checks if the value of the object is equal to v old. And if it is, it changes the value to v new and it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. And uh, compare and swap is a useful primitive for uh, achieving synchronization because what the threads usually want to do is to read the value of some shared variables, perform some local computation, and then if the computation is not already obsolete, write back the new value that they calculated, they computed. Now, 
if the computation is already obsolete because the variable has changed already, then uh, they shouldn't make any change. And, uh, then, and this is exactly what the compare and swap does, right? So if uh, we are still uh, valid, then uh, the change is going to be accomplished and we are going to return true. Uh, whereas uh, if um, the, the, um, the computation is already obsolete, the value of the variable has changed, then I'm going to uh, return false without making any change. Okay? And also, the threads may fail by crashing. And let me just say that uh, the hardware provides read, write, and compare and swap in an atomic way. Okay? So this, these are the primitives. So, and um, every, you have heard a lot about linearizability, so I'm going to be very fast. And if you feel that you still do not understand the notion, please uh, stop me and I'm going to give you more examples so that to be sure that you all follow me. Um, so, an algorithm is linearizable if every execution it produces, um, if in every execution it produces, each operation should have the same response as if it has uh, uh, been executed serially or atomically at some point in its execution interval. And the point is called linearization point of the operation. Do you feel <laughs> confident that you understand that? Okay. So I'm going to give you just one example. I had a few more, but I removed them because the other speakers <laughs> uh, talked a lot about linearizability. Uh, but this example I needed later on, so I'm, I'm going to present this example. Here I have a queue, so it's a, first, a, a FIFO queue. And in this execution, this is the time axis. And uh, here is an execution where it has been produced by some algorithm, which I don't, I'm not going to reveal right now. And the execution, and a thread enqueues one, and then another enqueue happens, which enqueues two, and then a DQ, and then an enqueue of the value three. And concurrently with the DQ and the enqueue of value three, I have this read all, which in this execution returns one, two. And the question is, is this execution linearizable? And uh, as you can understand, it is very easy to linearize the blue operations because they are sequential, basically, um, uh, to each other. Uh, and then, um, where shall we relinearize this read all? And in order to answer this question, you have to see that after this linearization point, uh, the queue contains one. After this linearization point, the state of the queue is one, two. Uh, after the DQ, the state is just two because this is a FIFO queue, so the DQ returns one. And uh, after this point, the, actually after this linearization point, the DQ contains two, three. So the read all, in order to be serializable, linearizable, it has to return either one, two, or two, or two, three. Uh, if it is uh, linearized between this point, between the beginning and this point, it should return one, two. If it is linearized between this point and this point, it should return two. And if it is linearized after this point, it should return two, three. And this is so because the sequential execution that is defined by these uh, stars here um, should return the same response. The, the operation should return the same responses as in the concurrent execution. So I'm going to linearize the read all here. And given that I was able to give linearization points to all the operations, this execution is linearizable. This is clear? Please feel free to ask me again. OK. Now I'm going to show you a non-linearizable execution. In this execution, this is exactly the same as the previous one, but the read all now returns one to three. OK. And when the read all returns one to three, uh, it should be clear to you that uh, it's, this is not linearizable now, okay? And uh, the reason that it is not linearizable is that uh, if it is linearized here, it has to return one two. If it is linearized between this point, after this point, it has to return two three. And if it is linearized in between, it has to return just two. But uh, this algorithm produces the output one two three. And therefore, this execution is not linearizable. Now, if you ask me, what does the algorithm do? And it produces this output, this weird output. I will tell you, get the trivial algorithm, the sequential algorithm. And, and this, this all read all means that, um, sorry, I, had, I, I should have said that, but uh, it means that you go through the queue and you have to read all the, all, all the elements of the queue in an atomic way. Okay. Now, if you get the sequential algorithm, what would the sequential algorithm do? It will read the head, and then with a while, 
um, in, in a set, it's gonna collect uh, the elements as it goes, and it's gonna move from here to the next element until it reaches null, right? And then it will return. This is a sequential algorithm. So if you run the sequential algorithm in the concurrent setting, what might happen is that uh, uh, the algorithm may start, you know, let's say at this point, it may read uh, uh, head, it will read head, it will see that in head, uh, it will read uh, one in the first node, then it will move to the next node, it will read two. So the result thus far is one, two, but uh, the algorithm has not completed, and then the read all becomes slow, and uh, after that, uh, the DQ happens, so the head points to, to node 2 now, and the NQ3 happens, so now tail points to node 3, and then um, the read all uh, uh, continues its execution, and uh, now uh, the next pointer of this node is not null, so the read all is going to continue, and it's going to also read 3, and the result it's going to return is 1, 2, 3. Is this clear? So the sequential algorithm is not gonna, which is the trivial algorithm to consider, is not gonna be correct in this setting. Clear? Is it clear? Okay. So, uh, this is not a correct algorithm. And when it comes to progress, we are gonna focus on non-blocking algorithms, uh, and uh, which means that these algorithms do not use locks. And um, in this non-blocking uh, setting, uh, th there are two conditions, weight freedom and lock freedom, that are the most widely no the, the most well known, the most widely used. Weight freedom is a very strong progress condition, which says that every thread finishes the execution of its operation within a finite number of steps. So it guarantees that every thread is going to make progress. Whereas lock freedom is a weaker condition, which says that some thread finishes the execution of its operation within a finite number of steps. So the system as a whole makes progress, but some specific threads may, may starve just because other threads make progress instead, okay? So weight freedom is stronger and is, is, is a stronger condition and it implies lock freedom, but not vice versa. Is this clear? Okay, so this is the background knowledge I would like you to have. Please ask me again if you have any question. And uh, before I proceed to give you uh, the details of the Vikas approach, I'm going to give you an example of a concurrent queue implementation, which is pretty simple, and I'm going to use it as, as, my, as, as my working example. So uh, the queue is the Michael and Scott queue, and uh, the way it works is that um, uh, the next, uh, it, it, is a, it, it uses a linked list to store the queue elements, and uh, the next pointers are cast objects, so we update them using compare and swap, and uh, the tail and head are also uh, compare and swap objects. And therefore, and initially there is a dummy node and tail and head point to this dummy node. Actually, head will always point into, to a dummy node, but this dummy node is not always the same node. It's always, the dummy node is always the, the, the node that head is pointed to, but it, it is not always the same, of course, because we have the queues and head is moving. Um, so, uh, these, three, these three variables here are compare and swap objects. And what the algorithm does in its sequential version, when I have just one thread around, is that uh, when the thread comes and it wants to NQ1, it will first read tail, and then it's going to read the next field of the node that uh, tail points to. And if it is null, which means that tail points to the last node, then it's going to uh, malloc a new node and uh, where it, uh, it, which it which it initiates appropriately, which it initiates appropriately, and then it's gonna execute a compare and swap, which is gonna be successful because there is no contention, uh, trying to change this pointer to point to the newly allocated node. And uh, uh, once this is done, then it's gonna execute another compare and swap. Again, it's gonna be successful and uh, advance tail to point to this node. Is this clear? Clear. Is this clear? Okay. So now let me make it a little bit more interesting. I have two threads now. The first wants to NQ1, the second wants to NQ2. They are going to both read tail and the next uh, field of the node pointed to by tail. And um, they are both going to see that this, uh, this next field is null. So they are going to uh, malloc uh, one node each and they are uh, going to apply compare and swap, both of them, on this next field. And let's assume that thread one is fast, 
So the competitor swap is going to succeed, whereas this competitor swap is going to fail. And this is what the state of uh, the system is going to be after this competitor swap has, has succeeded. And now if thread one is fast, it's going to execute its second competitor swap and it's going to advance tail. But, and then thread two have to, has to repeat. So thread two, every thread uh, executes a while where it repeatedly tries because this is a log-free algorithm, okay? Uh, tries these comparison swaps, uh, this, this protocol that I presented. Uh, now thread two is going to succeed and uh, the tail is, and eventually this is what, what is going to be the state. Is it clear? Okay, however, thread one may, I'm, I'm going back now in, in time, and thread one may become slow before it, uh, uh, it, it, had, it, 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 uh, it updates tail. So when thread two is gonna execute its next iteration and it's gonna retail and the next field is gonna find that this next field is not null and uh, it's gonna decide that now there is another thread which is, uh, is low and a tail is falling uh, behind. So I have to help this other thread um, to advance tail. And once I help this other thread, I'm gonna redo the whole thing can uh, um, so tail always point not always but but I cannot add another an element if I do not fix tail to point to the last element of the, of the queue. Is this clear? Okay. Okay. So now my last piece is uh, let's assume that I have a DQ. Uh, so now what uh, thread one is gonna do is gonna read hail, it's gonna read tail, tail, head and tail, sorry, because if these two point to the same node, then the queue, this is the dummy node and the queue is empty. Uh, if this is not the case, then I'm gonna read this next field. And remember that this is a dummy node, so I'm gonna read the value of the next uh, uh, node of the dummy node, and this is what I'm gonna return. Um, and um, if all this is, uh, is done appropriately, then I'm gonna execute a compare and swap on head to make head point to the next node. And now this next node uh, is the dummy node and recall that one has been returned already. Okay, clear? Any questions up until this point? Okay, so now I'm gonna, gonna go back to the Vikas technique. And just to remind you, when I have a concurrent data structure which is log free and is built uh, through compare and swap objects, I'm going to use the Vikas technique to take a, a handle to a snapshot of the data structure. And then I'm going to use this handle to answer multi-point queries. And uh, here I'm trying to, it is, it is a, a simple technique, it, it is very general, it is, it is general, it is very efficient, uh, and we have applied it to uh, log-free queues, binary search trees, uh, linked lists, chromatic trees, and it can be applied to many other data structures. So, so it is pretty general. Uh, and when we apply it to, to a queue, in addition to the NQ and DQ operation, we can also take um, uh, read all, range query, give me the ith element, uh, uh, or, or whatever, you know, return all the elements that are greater than this node, uh, or, or any read, uh, multi-point read query that you, would, you, have, you might, might have in your mind. Okay? And uh, this is true, of course, you may tell me, why do we need to do all this in, in, on a queue? And maybe the answer is that, that it's not so, so useful for a queue because uh, we don't uh, often have such functionality in the queue, but the queue is just my running example, right? And, and I have chosen this example, not because it is the most meaningful, but because it is the simpler one to, to present, the simplest one to present to you. And uh, this uh, can all be applied to trees, uh, lists, uh, and uh, many, many more data structures that you can imagine. And the, the other thing is that uh, it preserves the parallelism and the time bounds of the original operations that were supported by the data structure. And uh, you can also add all this, like find the case successors, find this, find that, uh, search for many, many, more than one key, etc. And this is done in, in, in a weight-free manner and it is linearizable. Okay? Uh, so let me give you the overview of the Vikas approach. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, for every cache object, which I remind you that it supports read and compare and swap, I will have a version cache object that supports vread, vcas, vread, and uh, read version. 
and um, uh, VRead works like a, a, as, as read, so, and VCAS works like a CAS, uh, but remember that this uh, is a versioned object, so it also remembers its history, right? I'm going back to the first slide now. Um, and uh, this is done through a version list. So I have a list of all the previous versions of, 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 of each, each object, of each VCAS, of each, each compare and swap object, which is now called version CAS object. And so the read returns the current version of the object, the CAS, behaves the same way as the CAS object, uh, as the compare and swap on the CAS object. And I also have this read version, which uh, can give you some of the old versions of the object if it is needed. Okay? And I also have a camera object which supports just the take snapshot operation. And this take snapshot makes it possible for a thread it, it is the, the operation that returns the handle to the snapshot. So it makes it possible for a thread to later read only the memory, read only the memory locations it needs from the shared memory, knowing that all such reads will be atomic. Okay? And the time complexity for vread, for vcas and take snapshot is order one, and the constant is small, whereas read version is weight free. I'm gonna give the more details. Um, so how does it work? The, the take snapshot is implemented is, is a trivial implementation. It is just a, a timestamp, which is a compare and swap object. And uh, each query calls take snapshot to get a timestamp. And more than, than one queries may have the same timestamp. And then each query attempts to, ato to atomically increment the timestamp using compare and swap. So let's see an example. Uh, here a query comes. Uh, it's gonna read uh, TS, it's gonna see zero in it, and then it's gonna compare and swap and change its value to one. Is this clear? Uh, if two more queries come, then uh, they will gonna read TS, they may read one, and uh, they are gonna, let's assume that the green one is, is faster. So they compare and swap, and th the green one uh, compare and uh, per performs a compare and swap and changes the value of the object to two. Uh, now, the red uh, is going to use one as its old value, so its compare and swap will not succeed. And uh, both the green and the red will have the same timestamp, and just the green has managed to, to uh, upgrade the, the timestamp. And the other thing is that uh, each version of a VCAS object has a timestamp which has been read from TS. Okay, so every time my VCAS I'm going to read a timestamp from this camera object and I'm going to have it together with, uh, I'm going to stamp this version with this timestamp. Okay? So uh, here I have the queue that I, show you, I, show to, I showed previously. And the next fields now are going to be version CAS objects because they were, so what I'm going to do in my data structure is I'm going to change all the compare and swap objects to version CAS objects. Okay, so if you remember the head and tail and the next fields of uh, uh, the nodes of the lists were compare and swap objects, now they will become VCAS objects. And therefore all these next fields are now version cast objects. Okay, and uh, if I zoom in to one of these version cast objects, the next pointer now of this node is a pointer to the first node of a version list and uh, uh, to the first node of a version list and this first node contains the current value. This val field contains the current value of, of next, uh, but the node, which is now called v node, also contains the timestamp and the pointer to the next version. So that I can, uh, through the next uh, field, I can now ac have access to all the versions of this VCAS object. Okay? So the VCAS objects uh, are represented internally using version lists, and uh, the nodes of these version lists are called V nodes, uh, and uh, each V node, uh, the fields of a V node, uh, are th there are three fields, val, ts, and v next. And val is the value uh, of the object, uh, either the current, if this is the top element in, in this list, or previous values. Uh, the ts is the timestamp that I read in the camera object, and v next is a next pointer to the 
next, uh, to the previous version, okay, to the, to ne the next V node in the version list. And uh, one thing that I didn't mention and I should probably mention is that uh, for a data structure, for a specific data structure, all this version <coughs> cast object will be associated with the, sa the same camera object. So they all read the same, from the same place timestamps, okay, for all these, for all these three VCAS objects, I'm going to use the same camera, co camera object. And uh, as I said, these are previous values of the next field of this node, whereas this is the current value. Um, now, I'm going to give you uh, a, a brief description of uh, the operations that the VCAS object supports and the camera object supports. Uh, the camera object supports just this operation, which is called take snapshot. And what it does is that it attempts to increment TS using compare and swap and returns its previous values, value. So a, a, a take snapshot on, on TS is going to get back 8 and uh, will increment 8 to 9 if there is no contention. Okay? Uh, now, VCAS uh, takes three arguments, says compare and swap, uh, the variable, an old value, and the new value. And um, it tries to link uh, in the version list a new node with timestamp to be decided initially. And then it tries to update this timestamp to make it valid. So if the timestamp is to be decided, it's not considered to be valid. It, it has not been initialized yet. Then uh, you have to update the timestamp to make it valid. Uh, a vread uh, goes to the first node of the version list it helps update the timestamp if it is still to be done, to be decided, and then you return the value, the val field, which is the current value of the object. And uh, a read version uh, takes uh, as a parameter the object and the timestamp, and uh, it has to find the, 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 the and, and it's gonna start from the first uh, node of uh, this version, uh, this, this, this uh, object, this VCAS object, uh, uh, it's going to help update the timestamp of the current version and then it's going to uh, move through the version list uh, in order to find the newest version with timestamp less than or equal to T. Is this clear? Any questions up until this point? Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. I lost my focus for a while. So the, this VCAS object is this list of nodes. Which node is the version list? Um, well, this is the queue, okay? This is the queue. And uh, the next fields of the node of the queue, each one of them is a VCAS object. And if we zoom into one of these VCAS objects, we get a version list. So basically, the next field is not uh, a pointer to the next node of the queue, but it is a pointer to the first node of a version list uh, and the val field of the first node of this version list points to the next node of the queue now, because this is the current value. And there are also the previous values, because this is a multi-version implementation of the data structure, and the previous values point to previous values that this next field of this node had, in that, that values that it had in the past. But I'm gonna show you an example in a while, so and I hope this will make things clear. These considerations are the interface yeah, exactly. I'm gonna, yes, yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. So, um, what are, uh, l let me show you the, I'm gonna work with the working example, which, the Michael, which, which is the Michael and Scott queue. And uh, I want to remind you that uh, in the Michael and Scott queue, the next field of nodes were compare and swap objects, and head and tail were also compare and swap objects. So now, the next field of a node is a, a, a version cast object and head and tail are VCAS objects. Okay? Is this clear? So uh, here is my camera object. And here is the initial version of uh, uh, the list. I have the dummy node, but head does not point directly to the dummy node. It points to the first element of a version list and the val field of this node points to the dummy node because head is not a, a cas object, it's a vcas object, okay? And the same is true for tail. 
instead of pointing directly to the dummy node, it points to the next to the to the first node of a version list, and the val field of this uh, node points to dummy. And again, the next field of this dummy node is a is a Vikas object. So it's not null. <laughs> it points to the first node of a, of a version list, and the val field of this of of the, of the first node of this version list is null. Okay. So this is the initial state of the algorithm. Is it clear? Any questions? OK. So thread one comes. It wants to enqueue one. And uh, what it does, it, it, it is that it has to read tail and the next field. But now these are Vikas objects. So it's going to V-read, not read, right? And uh, what, uh, what is the algorithm of vread? The algorithm is help update the timestamp of the most recent version. And the most recent version is this uh, and this. There is no other version in the version list. And return the current value of x. And here, because I have no, I have no threads that perform queries, the timestamp is going to stay 0 for a while. And the timestamp is set already. So the vread will simply return uh, the val field of this node, the current value of tail, uh, so it's going to return a pointer to dummy. And uh, this vread is going to return this val field, which is null. And the algorithm is going to continue, so now the next field of the first node is null. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new node. But uh, remember that the next field is a Vikas object, so when I knew this node, when I perform new to create this node, I'm going to also, also create uh, the first node of its version list, and the value is going to be null, the timestamp 0, because the camera object has timestamp, because the timestamp in the camera object is 0, and uh, no next uh, pointer in this version list. So this is going to be the, the, sta the state of, uh, of the system. And then I'm going to execute vcas. Vcas on, next on the next field, which is now a vcas object, trying to connect this new node into the uh, the queue. And uh, this is just to remind you what Vikas does. Uh, you're going to malloc a new node, a new V node. Here it is. You're going to set the values as it should be set. And then you're going to link it in the version list of which object of the next, uh, the version list of the next <laughs> pointer of the dummy node. OK? So this is the version list of this next uh, um, this next, uh, you see, this next field of, of this node. And the new val now points to the next node in the, in the queue. OK? So these are the queue nodes, and these are, are V nodes that are in the version list of the different Vikas objects. Is this clear? Questions? Questions? Is this clear? OK. So. Then uh, thread one is going to try to Vikas on tail. And again, Vikas, what it's going to do is it's going to create a new version for tail. And uh, it's going to uh, initiate val appropriately to point to one now and not to dummy. And then it's going to, so this is how things are going to evolve. OK, so you have tail pointing to the new version, and the new the value of the new version now points to one. Whereas, but you also have this next V field, which takes you to the, to the previous version of tail, uh, to the next uh, node of the version list, and the value of the, that version was pointing to dummy. OK? <laughs> is this clear? <laughs> so now the version list of tail is this. And the version list of head is just this node because head has never changed. It had just its initial value. There are two nodes in the version list of this next field, and just one node with val null in the version list of this next field. This is clear? OK. So now let's assume that uh, more threads come. Thread 2 wants to NQ2, thread 3 wants to NQ3, and I have thread 4 which wants to DQ. And I'm going to show you how the uh, data structure would look like. <laughs> and I'm going to also show you which are the version lists. So uh, the version list of tail has four nodes because tail has changed from dummy to point to one, to point to two, to point to three. So it has taken four values. Head has two nodes, the version list, because head has changed from dummy to one, OK, because I have performed the DQ. And the val fields point to, 
to node one and to dummy, and the version list of each of the next fields just contain two nodes. Is this clear? Yes or no? Understand. So the next uh, pointer now is, is version list. This uh, lists the versions of the next element in the queue. The next field is a pointer to a v-node yeah. to, to the current value, which is the, the last that you have appended in this version list. And the v-nodes contain next v-pointers that point to the next version, which, is basically, which basically stores the previous value of the object. Is this? Yeah, this this relates to the next object in the queue, and this is the previous value which was null, yeah. right? Okay. So far, yeah. yeah, so far, and because the its its next field changes just once, you just <laughs> add the the next uh, the next uh, element in the queue. This version list contains just two elements. Yes, I have a question. I haven't incremented the timestamp yet. This is coming, okay? <laughs> this is an interesting yet because the timestamp is always zero, right? So why are we doing all this? You know, right now it's just overhead, right? But I'm gonna explain what is gonna happen when I'm gonna bring a read query in, in, the, in, the, in the picture uh, soon, okay? So you have to wait a little bit. Uh, up to now, are we okay? Do we understand the technique? Yeah. Uh, so when, when, when uh, having a pointer to a Vikas object, do, do we also store a version of this Vikas object we are interested in? Because otherwise we, we cannot update this Vikas object. Uh, the Vikas object is a pointer. The v each Vikas object is a pointer to, to its version, to the first element of its version list. Yes, yes, but we, we here have a pointer to the Vikas object. Uh, head is a pointer, is the name of a Vikas object. So when we say head, we mean this pointer to this, to this node here. And when we say head uh, right arrow val, we mean uh, a pointer to this object. So if this object is stored in uh, address 1024, then here it is stored 1024. And if this object is stored in uh, 512, here, it is, uh, the, the value is 512. Is this clear or, or not? No? no? But when we have this pointer to, to a Vikas object, we, we probably need, need, need the version, the latest version we, we've seen it, mm -hmm. to access it later. Because yes. I, okay. Yes. So I have this pointer to the first object of the version list. And then uh, through these next pointers of the V node, I can move to the previous versions and I can find all versions, or all necessary versions. Does this make sense to you? You're still confused, right? So what, does con what is the confusion? Well, the, the head, it points to, to the object. Uh... To a V node, to, to the first element of the version list of tail. Yeah, like let's say element one. This, this is the Q, the Q nodes, right? The Q, no, the Q contains one, two, and three. The blue nodes are the Q nodes, okay? Are the blue nodes are the same as what I was, uh, so, sort of the same as what I was um, uh, showing in previously when I was uh, um, presenting the, the, the Michael and Scott Q, the original algorithm. But uh, head is not now a pointer to a, a Q node, it is a pointer to a V node. Is this clear? Now I have two different types of nodes, the blue and the white, okay? Is it clear now? Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. Since we want uh, to access the old version, uh, does it mean that we need to make a, a planar search on it? Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to follow you have to follow tail, for instance, and then you have to, uh, to go through the version list in order uh, up until the point that you find the version that you, you're looking for. Why not? Yes, you can. Why does that switch from 
I'm going, you, you are talking about garbage collection now. This is the second part of the talk, if I have time, okay? So for the time being, everything is there. All the history is there. But we can, uh, yeah, we can have a more compacted version of this version list. We can garbage collect, okay? But if I have time, I will explain more. So uh, now I'm going to bring the queries into the picture. And, and this probably will answer your previous question. And uh, I'm going to assume that uh, uh, this is the current status of the queue. So it contains one and two. And, uh, uh, and Q3 and DQ have, have not uh, taken place yet. And uh, now a, a thread that uh, wants to execute read all comes. It uh, calls take snapshot. It reads zero and changes the value of TS to one. Clear? OK. And uh, now. Uh, what, what happens is that uh, if uh, uh, thread 3 comes and tries to enq3 and the dq comes uh, uh, that is executed by thread 4, it's not going to stamp, uh, the timestamp of this is gonna, it's not going to be 0, but it's going to be 1, right? So here is how the, uh, the, the, the state of the object looks like uh, after uh, these uh, two operations have been executed. So basically, uh, this V node is uh, stamped with the timestamp 1, this with the timestamp 1, uh, this uh, last version of tail has the timestamp 1, and the same is true for the current uh, version of head, because the DQ and the NQ took place after the, the TS have, 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 have uh, been incremented. Is this clear? Do you understand? Because when, uh, when, this, uh, NQs, when these threads uh, came, the TS contained one and not zero anymore. So it is one that they write in all these nodes that they have, be, they have allocated. And uh, now um, the query is going to execute the sequential code. Okay, but do you remember the sequential code? Um, so the query. Uh, will execute the sequential code, but the sequential code was wrong previously. So in order to solve the problem, the query will not use read. It will use v read version instead. So instead of using v read to read the different, uh, if, if I use v read, I will go here, I will see that uh, one, uh, then I will uh, go here, two, I'll go here, three, and I will return one to three, which is wrong. Uh, it's not going to use read. It has to use read version. And because the query read zero, it's going to pass the zero as a parameter to read version. And uh, therefore, what the query is going to read is uh, it's going to go to head, but this is time, the timestamp of this node is one. So I'm going to move. This is the code, right? I have to find the newest version with time which is less than or equal than, less than or equal than, than t. Um, uh, uh, so I'm going to move to this node and I'm going to follow this val and I, I will go here. And then I'm going to go to the version list through the next pointer of this node. And because this has the timestamp 0, I'm going to go to 1 and I'm going to read 1 and I will add it to the result that I'm going to return. Then I will go here. This version has uh, the timestamp zero. I'm going to go to this node. I will uh, read two. And uh, then I will follow. And two is going to be in the result. And now I'm going to go to this node. But this has version one. So I'm going to move here. And this is null. And I'm going to stop here. This is the end of my, of my snapshot, basically. So I'm not going to return one to three. I'm going to return just one two, which is correct. Right? Do you understand? Correct. But I'm going to stop to the first one as I'm going through to the last one, which has to the newest one that has timestamp less than zero. So I'm going to stop to this one. Because all this have, have happened uh, while the timestamp was zero, and I have to consider all of these changes. OK? I'm going to ignore only changes that come at uh, the epoch one, that when the timestamp, that are timestamped with the number one. Is this okay? 
Is this clear? I don't need to keep the rest, but this is the next problem, right? Uh, one thing at a time, if I have time, okay? Because we are going a little bit slow. Yeah, probably not, yes. So, any other questions? Shall I continue a little bit? Okay, let me become a little bit faster. So, here is what you have to do in the code. So, this is the code of uh, Michael and Scott and Q. And what the code does is uh, a, a, every thread uh, mallocs a new node, and then uh, it applies repeatedly, read the tail, read the next field of tail, and uh, then uh, if next is not equal to null, you compare and swap. If next is not equal to null, then tail is falling behind, so you have to help. Otherwise, uh, you try to append your node at the end of the list, and you try to advance tail to point to your newly allocated node. It doesn't matter. What I want you, you don't have to, to understand all the details, although I have shown them previously. What you have to understand is that the changes you have to do in this code are very trivial. So basically, whenever you read tail, you read next, or you read head, you have to use vread. And when you cast, you have to use vcast, and this is all. And then the technique works, okay? So it's easy to change the code. And here you can see an example of a binary search tree, which is a little bit more advanced. It doesn't matter, I don't have to explain a lot of things. Now the LC and RC fields are vcast objects, and uh, you can apply all these uh, queries and many more. And uh, again, the root points to a V node, and uh, the V node uh, the, 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 to, a, to a version list. And uh, this is the current value, this is the previous value, and again, LC and RC point to version list, etc. Okay, it doesn't matter. If you understood the previous, this is the same. Okay? And um, uh, if I am supposed to compare with existing techniques, I would say that there are many techniques that are specialized for specific data structures. They have been presented for specific data structures, so they are not enough general. Uh, there are some um, um, more general techniques, but uh, their efficiency is not as good as these techniques. VCAS is very simple, it's general, it has very good performance, but software transactional memory is less efficient, but more general. Okay? <laughs> and um, um, uh, there are some uh, optimizations that we can do. The bad thing with this technique is that we add a level of indirection, and uh, this level of indirection brings some cost into the picture, right? Because in order to access one node, you have basically to access two nodes, which is not good. But uh, there are some cases where you can merge the actual node of the data structure and, and, the, and the V node, and uh, you can have uh, uh, the version list uh, together with the actual nodes of, and, and this, uh, uh, you, you can see the details in the paper, okay? But the, we can, in some cases, we can avoid, avoid this extra overhead of having this in direction, okay? And uh, we have an experimental analysis uh, which uh, um, shows that uh, adding support for multi-point queries on top of existing concurrent log-free data structures was very easy, and it required to add fewer than 150 lines of code in C++. The overhead is very small, and uh, the VCAS approach is often as fast as or faster than state-of-the-art log-free structures supporting range queries. Um, uh, so, the summary doesn't matter because I want to say a few things about uh, garbage collection. Our code is on GitHub and we have a full version with full proofs, etc., uh, 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 archived. Now, do I have five minutes? Okay. So, now I'm going to answer your, I'm going to try to answer your questions about uh, uh, how to do garbage collection because any system that maintains multiple versions of uh, each object needs a way of efficiently reclaiming them. Otherwise, this version list become huge and then uh, there is a cost, of course. Um, so, the research question is, how do we garbage collect efficiently for multi-version data structures? This is the question we want to answer. So, do we need all these versions and what do we do with these versions that we do not need? And uh, in another paper that has appeared in DISC 2021, we present a general multi-version garbage collection scheme with the following properties. It is weight-free, and specifically it requires uh, 
order one time periclaimed version on average, and uh, it is as good as maintaining just a constant factor more versions than needed, plus an additive term, okay? And um, I don't expect that, for, for instance, uh, what, what needed means, but I'm going to explain in a while, okay? So, um, previous solutions either use unbounded space or they require order p time periclaimed version where p is the number of processes which is expensive. So, now let me show, show you what is the, the problem. So, the problem is that for each object you have a big version list which becomes bigger as the time is progressing, right? And uh, if you maintain all the old versions, this results in high memory usage and it is, not, uh, it is not what we want because this is gonna degrade performance. So how do we identify which versions are not needed and how do we safely reclaim them? This is the two questions we need to answer. And uh, let's assume that this is the axis of time uh, and I'm gonna explain to you what are the versions that we actually need. Okay, what, what needed means. Uh, of course, the current versions are needed because this is <laughs> how I can navigate through my data structure, right? And now, if I, if I assume that I have two multipoint queries and the timestamp is this and this, are determined by these two lines, then what I actually need um, are just these four versions, okay? Are the versions that uh, the object had in my timestamp, but my timestamp is uh, all the updates that, that it, it, it has to reflect the updates that have been performed before this time and before this time. So basically, I need the last uh, versions, the newest versions that are before this time and the newer versions that are before this time, right? So for these two objects, if I have just two multi point queries, I need to maintain six versions. Is this clear? Because remember of read version, what does it do? It's going to get this timestamp as a parameter and it's going to traverse the, the version list until it finds the first version that uh, has a timestamp which is uh, smaller than or equal to this timestamp. Okay? So I don't need all the rest. So all the, all the green things here are, are needed, are, are not needed. But I maintain them and I pay for them, right? So I don't want to do this. Um, so, uh, maybe the most well-known and the simplest technique to do garbage collection is epoch-based solutions, like epoch-based reclamation. You may be aware of this technique. Uh, but um, if you go and, and read the, the papers that describe this technique, I don't have the time to explain all the details. What it does is basically, um, uh, if, uh, if, if th this, is the, 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 uh, this is the slowest query, right? So this is the, the smallest timestamp in my system. What I can reclaim are just the unneeded version that precede this timestamp. But I cannot reclaim anything after this. This is just because this, this is the way that the technique works. So it has no way to find and reclaim um, later versions, okay? So this is not good because I still have a lot of versions that are needed, all this and this, okay? Uh, which the technique does not, uh, does not reclaim, okay? Um, I know this is a little bit fast, but I want to give you the flavor. It's not as slow as it was the previous part, okay? And uh, uh, this has high space usage because uh, the technique is, uh, is unable to collect newer obsolete versions. Uh, and uh, if I have, uh, uh, and it is particularly bad with long read only operations, uh, uh, but it is fast and, and it is easy to implement. So it is used a lot. It is the most common technique to use. I'm not gonna, but uh, what I want you to understand is that the problem to solve is not easy and it has three steps. The first step is to identify the obsolete version. So which are the, which are the obsolete? So give me all the pointers to the obsolete versions. The second is to unlink these versions from the version list because they are in a shared data structure. They are part of the, of the state of the data structure, right? And the third is reclaim them. And even the third step is not easy because even if you unlink them from the version list, there might be queries that uh, 
pass through these versions, and if you go and free one of these versions, then these queries, if they are ready to access this one of these versions, just to move on to the next one, they are going to get a segmentation fault. Do you understand this? So the queries go through the version lists, and even if uh, you remove one version from the version list, it might be that one such thread is, 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 is just there and it is ready to access this version. And if you free this version, then this thread is going to uh, get a segmentation fault. So there are three things that you have to do. And very, very briefly, I'm not going to present the technique. In the paper, uh, we address all these three steps. So in step one, we have this range tracker object. All these objects are linearizable and have very good performance, where it gets uh, the version list, uh, which contains also the unneeded version, and the, active, the timestamps of the active multipoint queries, and it returns uh, a set of the obsolete versions, and it guarantees uh, that uh, all this happens in amortized time order one, and the space is order needed. And there is a constant here, of course, it's not one, but uh, it's order needed, right? And I explained to you what is needed. Then for the second step, um, what I have to say is that even if the range tracker gives me pointers to all these objects, in order to remove them from the list, I need to know the previous node, and I have no, no pointer to the previous node, right? So the version list, uh, I need the parent to unlink, so the version list should be doubly linked list. It cannot be singly linked list. Uh, and therefore, we had to also present uh, a weight-free amortized order one algorithm for remove from a doubly linked list, and this is in the paper. And finally, for step three, as I said, even if you remove it, it is still difficult to say, now I'm going to free it. So you, you have to use either hazard pointers or reference counters or something to be sure that nobody point, is pointing to this node. Okay? And uh, we also present uh, one technique, uh, a new safe reclamation scheme uh, in order to do this efficiently. And there are some, uh, well, I'm going to skip all this okay, because I'm out of time. But you can find all this in the paper. And uh, uh, I'm going to go directly to uh, here are the overall results. So uh, the time bounds is that we need order one time on average to identify, remove, and reclaim a version. The whole tec all of these techniques are weight free. And the space bounds is that uh, uh, I pay the number of unreclaimed versions, uh, not unreclaimed, of needed versions. Um, the number of sorry, the number of unreclaimed versions, versions is in the order of the of the needed versions plus a small additive term, and the full version is available on ARCs IV. We have a follow-up paper where we present simpler implementation of this doubly linked list, which is better in practice. Um, and uh, here are my conclusions. So here <laughs> uh, today we talked about the Vikas approach, which. Uh, um, it is a simple constant time approach to take a snapshot of a collection of compare and swap objects. Um, the technique uh, uh, can use a snapshot to implement linearized multi -point, linearizable multipoint queries in uh, many log free data structures. Uh, um, anyway, so we, we talked about all this. Uh, and also, we, we, we have in these papers uh, multi version garbage collection schemes. Uh, which uh, you can go and read if you want. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any more questions, I will be very happy to answer them. And uh, I'm also recruiting. So if you want to <laughs> come and work with me in Crete, which is a super beautiful island, <laughs> uh, send me an email. Okay. Thank you very much.